Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Some plots where you're working on nitrogen, looking at different nitrogen applications to uh, to wheat. Uh, going back, you have the nitrogen rate calculator that I believe the top yield on there is 65 bushels an acre. So farmers in, in parts of Western Canada, 65 probably isn't uh, isn't what they're aiming for anymore. You're working on updating that. I think they'd be real happy with 65 bushels in Saskatchewan and Alberta this year. Yes. But as we've had agronomists and farmers have been working with. Uh, uh, 65 bushels, was, uh, our, our nitrate rate calculator was the envy of uh, many in Western Canada because of that database and some pretty good yield potential. And that was quite adequate when we were growing, uh, targeting, growing berry wheat. But uh, we have made a little public effort to update those nitrogen recommendations. And with some of the wheat varieties coming on stream, I believe it's like Hyola 401 entering the uh, open pollinated canola market. We now have uh, genetics that uh, is 15, 20% or bushels more than, than that. So we don't have the research to back up those nitrogen rates now. Uh, we're having to resort to some of the thumb rules, uh, such as what my colleagues in North Dakota or in Minnesota use, and looking at, you know, maybe we need to target two and a half pounds of nitrogen per bushel is as a starting place and for 40 bushels of, of berry wheat that's 100 pounds of nitrogen and that's pretty close to where our guidelines used to fit in. When we're looking at 80 bushels or some growers we talk to 95 bushel targets that's almost over 200 pounds of nitrogen. So that's a lot, that's a lot more than our calculator ever factored in. So, so uh, we're actually working with the, the, the new uh, Manitoba uh, Wheat and Barley Growers Association to, 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 to start on, on addressing that uh, with some small plot research. But growers these days are not going to have the patience to wait for small plot research to catch up to them. Uh, so we're also wanting to have a field component to it. And so here we've been looking at some of the things that growers may wish to try and if they employ proper on-farm test techniques, we can pool that data and, and I think we can work with the small plot research to come up with a lot of answers quicker. So yield is, is the first part, but protein is something that growers are also increasingly interested in, in managing? Yeah, yeah. Is a, uh, I don't consider that greed. I call that uh, uh, targeting. Uh, our, our conventional nitrogen recommendations were producing some very high yields of inadequate protein uh, wheat. And so that's why uh, we're, we're needing to, to address that. And, and we're, we're, we tackled a bit of that. We had lined up between 15 and 20 cooperators this spring to do some on-farm tests with us. But come uh, uh, late May, early June, a lot of agronomists and farmers were assessing their crop, particularly in the Red River Valley, and saying, wow, the yield potential looks very good. How much should I top up and how much? And so our, our thought process was that, well, how much did you put on? Are you growing one of these high yield uh, varieties? Have you had nitrogen losses? A and in those cases, if, if the nitrogen supplied was less than that two and a half pounds of nitrogen per bushel, then we said, yes, uh, you may wish to, to try some in-season intervention. Uh, we've been kind of suggesting, you know, there's a couple different times to look at. Uh, one is early on would be with the, that the, the uh, inner no or the first node emergence and that's kind of a, a stage when you can go in there and nitrogen you apply then may actually some impact on yield. Or later applications, the other one we were looking to target was at the flag leaf when the color is emerged. They're uh, less likely that you'd have any yield impact anymore but more protein targeted. And then the final one that we were looking at here is uh, the post synthesis nitrogen application which is one that uh, I've, many farmers and I've been familiar with for close to, to 15, 20 years now, but it's only sometimes that farmers are interested in, in using it. There's more interest now 
because with these high yield varieties, they're needing uh, to meet some protein targets. Uh, so the, the recipe for that, that's something that we've, we are using from North Dakota State? Yeah, in, well, in well uh, yes, and there's variations upon it, but I'm not interested in variations. I would just like many farmers to try a similar protocol at this stage, and then actually information can be pooled to develop probability type information for other growers. If everyone tests something unique, we'll learn nothing. Each individual farmer will learn something for that year. If we pool information that's proper on-farm test techniques replicated, which is a, a cinch these days with our applicator system and yield monitors, and all we need is someone to scoop some protein for us uh, when you unload. Uh, with those type of techniques, we can pool the data and, uh, uh, and learn much. Uh, so uh, the recipe we've been looking at is, I call it the 7, 10, 20, 30 rule. Targeting seven days after your Fusarium head blight spray, 10 gallons of 28% nitrogen plus 10 gallons of water, U.S. gallons. Uh, 20, the 20 is kind of indicating to us, we'd like it to be below 20 degrees C. And the 30 is the 30 pounds of nitrogen total. Uh, the hardest one of those to achieve this year has been the cooler temperatures. And uh, here I've actually uh, disobeyed that by going in the heat of the day, 30 degrees, uh, Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock. And so we've caused considerable leaf burn. And uh, we're also seeing all that in grower fields just because it's retained, remained so hot. Uh, we still have to learn, has there been yield loss? And we also want to learn with farmers is, is what's the probability of achieving a half point or a full point yield in uh, protein increase. I think the nature of this high yield uh, wheat and high protein is it comes with high, higher risk than what farmers are accustomed to. We may well find that uh, it's too risky for some farmers to chase the high yields to get high protein. They may find that over here going for not uh, you know somewhat lower yield but more sure of a protein maybe that's the uh, the, the, the wheat varieties they should be growing and managing for. And I think that there are U.S. farmers that do that too. There's some that are in this prosper faller game, and there are others that say, no, I'll grow Glen wheat. I'll, 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 I'll sacrifice a bit on yield, but a much surer opportunity of, of collecting protein. Um, we're learning with the farmers on this one. Uh, but, uh, and until we start uh, collecting field data though, and sharing those results with others, uh, uh, we'll learn slower. I, I'm impatient. Uh, I'm getting too old to wait. And so I'd like to uh, work with farmers to do proper on-farm tests. Mm -hmm.